Seattle remains a prime location for espionage to occur. Are there spies in Seattle today? I have no doubt that there are. A former double agent for the FBI who believes he was tailed by Russian spies here in Seattle. I fully believe that she was a Russian asset. A married couple with a child living in the Seattle apartment, outed in secret videos as deep cover operatives in a cloak and dagger spy ring. And an historic Seattle building that the FBI says was a spy base for Russian intelligence. The United States still the main target. In the last decade or so, these cases have pulled back the curtain on Russian spying here in the Northwest. Michael Zatoli and Patricia Mills were the private couple that lived on the fifth floor of the Belmont Court Apartments in Seattle in the mid-2000s. You know, trying to talk to them and engage them in the elevator or in the hallway, it's just always very evasive. But not evasive enough to ditch the FBI. These evidence videos show Zatoli meeting with another spy in New York City on one of his frequent trips from Seattle. Other tapes show spies burying secret packages, this one under a bridge, called a dead drop. Here's Zatoli in 2006, unearthing such a package two years after it was buried. In one example, $150,000 and the flash memory card changed hands, according to declassified FBI files. All this happened as the couple lived an outwardly normal life in Seattle, their legend or backstory built with fake birth certificates and IDs. It all burst into public view in July 2010, when the feds arrested and deported 10 Russian spies nationwide. Do you think spies were watching you while you were in Seattle? It is hard for me to imagine that the Russians don't keep track of me wherever, <laughs> wherever I go. It's just one of those things. So, yeah. Up until a few years ago, Navid Jamali lived in Seattle as an outspoken former spy. It's funny, I was so naive when I first approached the FBI. Jamali toured the lecture circuit and wrote a book about the three years he spent with the FBI as a civilian spy. I became a, a double agent, and to make it very clear, what my goal was was to have the Russian intelligence apparatus operating in the United States recruit me as a Russian spy. The whole time I was being recruited and being directed by the Russians, I was really working for the FBI. In New York in the mid-2000s, in a case that's still officially classified, a young Naveed Jamali reeled in a big fish, a Russian diplomat who recruited him as a spy. I did something that very few if, uh, Americans have ever done, especially civilians, um, is I became a Russian-made man. Jamali believes even years later, the Russians kept track of him when he moved to Seattle like the time he spoke to a group here at the downtown Weston Hotel. You were approached by this woman at a speaking event here in Seattle. What did, what did you think she was? Oh, I, I fully believe that she was, um, you know, a, a Russian asset who had been directed to make contact with me and try to see if I would talk or get me in a compromising position. This undercover video from New York shows a brush pass, a handoff of cash to a spy from a Russian diplomat posted to the United Nations. The FBI says spies often work under diplomatic cover, even those in Seattle. The feds have said little about the supposed espionage at the former Seattle consulate, an extension of the Russian embassy in the U.S. In 2018, the federal government expelled all the diplomats from this historic home on East Madison. But property records show the empty consul's residence is still owned by the Russian government. Experts say foreign spies target the Northwest to gain secrets about military installations, notably naval base Kitsap, home to 14 Trident nuclear submarines, defense contractors like Boeing, and the region's thriving tech industry. Big tech companies, very interesting target and has been a big target for Russian spies for years. We spoke to Russian investigative journalist Andrei Soldatov, now based in London, to escape Putin's squeeze on the independent press. That is one of the reasons why I left the country in September 2020. With Western technology giving Ukraine advantages over the larger Russian army, expect more espionage in the U.S., says Soldatov, renowned for his deep reporting on Russia's three spy agencies. I think that Russian espionage operations will be more aggressive. Russian spies now believe they are in the war mode 
meaning that more things are acceptable for them than before the war. Meaning a new chapter may just be beginning in the history of spying in Seattle.